Week two of college football. We've got Steve Merrill on the line to break it down for us in regards to the top three games of the week. Steve joins us every week from Wager Talk and ProSportsInfo.com. So please join him there for not only college football, but Major League Baseball playoffs coming up. The NBA, of course, is not far behind. And oh, yeah, the NFL week one. So you got to join Steve right there. Top 25 games, huge games in the Big Ten in particular. Steve, let's get to it. We've got Ohio State and Oregon, a game that's been talked about the entire offseason. The Buckeyes arrive as a 14-and-a-half-point home favorite. Yeah, and uh, the line opened 14 early in the week, and it did not last long, Mark. It quickly went to that key number, above that key number, as you said, now 14-and-a-half. We'll see where it settles. My power ratings actually favor Ohio State by 15-and-a-half in this game. So the opening line of 14 maybe was a little bit low. Also, you know, Oregon lost a key defensive player, maybe the best in the nation last week in that first half against Fresno, and they really kind of went downhill after that. They did shut down the Fresno rushing attack last week. Uh, They were unable to shut down the passing attack, though. Um, Gave up almost 300 yards passing to Fresno. Now, keep in mind, Fresno State did have a game under their belt, which is a a little bit of an underrated advantage in college football. There's not many teams that qualify because not many teams played in Week 0, but Fresno was one of them. They had the easy 45 nothing went over a bad Connecticut team. But it's a huge advantage, especially in college football, to have that game under your belt because, you know, the other teams basically just practice an inter-squad scrimmage all of August. So I'm not going to read too much into Oregon's lackluster 31-24 non-covering win as an 18-point home favorite last week. And there's also obviously a huge look ahead to this Ohio State game. They're probably keeping a little bit of vanilla just for that reason. Um, Ohio State, meanwhile, had a bigger, more important game last week. They were at Minnesota, of course, that Thursday night primetime conference game. Uh, They opened as about a 14-point favorite. They actually closed 13.5 in some spots, and they won by exactly 14. So two weeks in a row, we've seen Ohio State move on and off that key number of 14. Last week's game landed right on that number, as many games often do. But the big thing for me with Ohio State, obviously a potent offensive team, 23-2 the first couple years under Day, now 24-2. Uh, This program obviously reloads. We know that each and every year. But the defense is still a major question mark for me. You know, we saw last year they struggled several games, especially early in the season, uh, to stop decent offensive opponents. I don't even know if you want to say decent within the Big Ten. And then, of course, they couldn't stop uh, Alabama at all. Gave up 52 in that title game. And now last week, you know, not only did they give up 31, but they give up over 200 yards rushing and passing uh, to Minnesota. And keep in mind, last year, uh, the first four weeks of the regular season, they gave up 25, 27, and 35 in three of those first four games. So still a big question mark for that Ohio State defense. I think Oregon can cover uh, maybe as a backdoor cover here. And once again, now that it's over two touchdowns, you always worry about that backdoor cover, and you always want to look for good offensive teams that can throw the ball. Oregon qualifies. Safest play, though, is probably the over 63.5. Surprisingly, this line opened 64. It has dropped to 63.5 in some spots. Um, I'm seeing some 64s back out there, but have to think both offenses will have the edge here. One last concern, though, if you're looking at Oregon, 12 noon Eastern start on Fox. That means it's 9 a.m. Pacific body clock start for Oregon. Uh, so maybe a first half play on Ohio State if you're looking for him to come out of the gate strong in this one. Steve Merrill joins us uh, each week to break down the top three games of the college football weekend. You can join him on Wager Talk, also on ProSportsInfo.com. Again, not just college football, the NFL Week 1 is underway. So catch up with Steve's work on Wager Talk and ProSportsInfo. Steve, a rare um, rivalry game this early in the season, Iowa-Iowa State. It's always important to the folks in that particular state, but it's a nationwide game for one of the few times. Both teams ranked uh, highly. Iowa coming off one of the most impressive wins of the week one um, games, uh, just blasting Indiana. Iowa State struggles past Northern Iowa. Cyclones a four and a half point pick at home. Yeah, I was one of the teams I was taking a look at last week. I mentioned on some shows we did, and um, this was an Iowa team I thought that was underrated coming into the season. I thought Indiana a little bit overrated. Um, Obviously, uh, they had a huge season last year. They returned a lot of key players, but a little bit of a phony season. You know, Indiana offensively was subpar last year, and Iowa was really good defensively, as they have been basically each of the last three to four seasons, and they smoked them 34-6. They were only a a three-and-a-half-point favorite in that game, so a very impressive win. Uh, likewise cannot be said for Iowa State. They were a 31.5-point favorite in that 16-10 non-covering win against Northern Iowa. Not only did they not cover, but they only scored half the point spread offensively. Now, obviously, they were looking ahead to this big game against Iowa. They were probably keeping a lot vanilla, keeping things close to the vest. 
But don't forget, last year, Iowa State started slow as well. They had that opening loss as an 11-point home favorite against Louisiana Lafayette. Obviously, Louisiana Lafayette turned out to be a very good team, as did Iowa State. But they started slow last year, uh, back-to-back lackluster non-covering home wins, a win this year, outright loss last year. Uh, they went on to win, though, uh, seven of their last next eight games, though, after that loss last season. So I'm not going to write them off yet. Uh, in fact, I think this line has been adjusted too much based on last week's results. You know, we always talk about overreactions in both the NFL and college football from week one to week two. You're going to see the biggest line adjustments, the biggest power rating adjustments, sometimes warranted, sometimes not, between weeks one and two. And I think that happened here. My power ratings actually favor Iowa State by six and a half in this game. Uh, the line is currently four to four and a half. So it's a couple points low. Um, I'm big on Iowa this season. I think they're a really good defensive dog in this game. They gave up only 16 last year. They gave up only 14 the year before that. So it's hard to lay points against a good team like Iowa. Um, but you figure this is a spotlight game for Iowa State. And I do think the point spread's a little low based on last week's results. Steve joins us each week to give us stats, facts, trends, a lean on the top three games of the week. But join us on Patreon. Just search Mark Rogers TV on Patreon or go to the link down in the description section for Steve's under the radar selection of the week. Texas, Arkansas, a couple of old, old rivals going back to the Southwest Conference. Uh, Texas with an impressive win against uh, Louisiana by 20 last week. Arkansas uh, pours it on late against Rice. The Hogs, a seven-point underdog at home. Yeah, last week I did a video for Wager Talk uh, TV. It's on YouTube, wagertalk.com, and I actually highlighted the Texas-Louisiana Lafayette game. It was kind of an under-the-radar game because Lafayette was technically a top-25 team, and uh, not many people were talking about that game last week. I know you were, Mark, because you cover everything as the voice of college football, but you know the mainstream media, I thought, kind of overlooked that one. Um, but I mentioned in that video that the line was only 8.5 to 9, and my power range actually favored Texas by 14.5 points last week. So I felt like the Longhorns were a little undervalued last week, and I just didn't think a Sunbelt team could necessarily keep up with them, and they pulled away. They went 38-18, to 18, uh, one point less impressive than Arkansas, who won 38-17. Difference was Arkansas was a 19.5-point favorite over Rice. They barely covered winning by 21. Um, not obviously a step up in class here for Arkansas, but last week Texas was underrated. Now, once again, like that Iowa-Iowa State game, I think the odds makers have over-adjusted maybe, and Texas is a little overrated. In fact, my power ratings only favor Texas by five points in this game, and the line is currently seven across the board. So that's only a two-point difference, but both six and seven are very key numbers. Um, so there's a little bit of live in value with Arkansas here. I think you could probably say they're a semi-live home dog here. I like teams also that remain at home after a high-scoring game. That's an angle that's worked very well uh, for decades in college football. And of course, you know, it's the second year, uh, the first year of Sarkeesian. I think that's why a lot of people underrated Texas last week. Uh, they came out of the gate strong, but this is their first, you know, true test on the road. That's always a difficult spot for a team with a new coach, new coaching staff, new program. Um, meanwhile, Arkansas's second year under their current coach, and I think that's a huge advantage because if you look at teams from years one to two, you see huge improvements. And last year was one of the most difficult years in college football history to be a first-year coach because you had shutdowns, you had limited practice, limited practice time throughout the season, no preseason. So now that Sam Pittman's in his second year at Arkansas and he returns 20 starters, 10 on each side of the ball, they should be better than their 3-7 and seven record last year and their 4-20 and 20 combined record the two seasons before he took over. Um, I think we get a little bit of value with Arkansas. At least that's what my power ratings are saying in this one. Please join us on Patreon for Steve's uh, Under the Radar selection of the week. And before we get to that, Steve, uh, one question for you. A lot of people believe uh, that they can catch Vegas napping with not enough information in week one and week two, and especially with the factor that you just brought up in regards to an overreaction by the public, uh, sometimes to week one. Um, th does Vegas fare better or worse early in the season? I, I, I'll say this, you know, sometimes you're going to have good weeks or bad weeks, but there's no question that the lines are, are softer, they're weaker in September than they're going to be in November or December. And that's because the power ratings that Vegas uses are statistical based. Um, they're not using a lot of judgment. You know, they're basically looking at numbers. And obviously, when you have five or 10 college football games to look at for every team, common opponents and whatnot, especially in conference play, the lines are going to get sharper. So there's no question the lines are soft. They're going to be more inaccurate in September in college football, in November and December in college basketball. 
And it's also true at the NFL. You know, you talk about week one is here in the NFL. We're going to see results this week in the NFL that do not correlate to the rest of the season. I've always said week one is basically used to be week five. Now it's week four of the preseason, in my opinion, because uh, it's still early for a lot of these teams have not played their starters more than a quarter all year. So tread lightly, but as a better, there are tremendous opportunities. And keep in mind, the biggest edge you have as a sports better is that the odds makers have to put a number on every game, but you get to pick and choose which games you play. 85, 90% of these games have no value, but there's going to be four or five games every weekend that have tremendous value. Those are the games I give my clients, same games I've used for over 25 years on a daily basis. You get those at prosportsinfo.com and also wagertalk.com. So listen to that, folks. It's not just about picking the games correctly. It's about money management, and Steve helps you with that. Again, at wagertalkprosportsinfo.com. Also gives us um, just exclusively right here at the Voice of College Football on our Patreon platform, his under-the-radar selection of the week. Next. <laughs> 